route was now unavoidable, but at this stage, a collision wasn't. There had still been one last chance to avoid a collision with another train. The control system in the Gare de Lyon area has a safety feature to ensure that no train can be directed into an already occupied platform. But unfortunately, investigators discovered that once the control center heard about the runaway train, they locked down the whole system. In order to keep all other trains out of harm's way, the control center initiated what's called a general closure procedure, which gave them complete manual control over the usually automated routing system. They now had the ability to switch every signal to red, freezing all other train traffic into the Gare de Lyon. But in overriding the automated system, they'd made a disastrous error of their own. They had disabled the one automatic safety feature that would have directed the runaway train into an empty platform. Disaster was now inevitable. The speeding train ploughed into the waiting train, crushing the front two carriages. Dominique Pavi can't quite believe she survived. J'ai vraiment la sensation euh, d'avoir évité la mort à 5 secondes et une mort horrible parce que j'étais au début du deuxième wagon donc j'aurais été euh, complètement euh, écrasé en accordéon quoi. Ça c'est sûr. C'est sûr. Donc vraiment pour moi c'était euh, euh, c'était euh, j'ai frôlé la mort de très très près quoi. After the Gare de Lyon incident, many changes were made to rail systems across Europe. Air brake valves were removed from engine cars, and passenger-activated emergency brakes were replaced with emergency driver intercoms to ensure that only the driver is able to stop the train. Changes were also made to the general closure procedure at French main stations, so that staff could manually operate the signalling system without overriding pre-programmed automatic routing features. But the top priority for engineers was to eliminate the risk of brake failure altogether. Among the technological safeguards in the AGV is a braking system in which it is not possible to bleed air from the main brakes. For one good reason. There is no air. Instead, the very thing that powers the train is also what breaks it. Ce moteur à aimant permanent fonctionne en général comme moteur, mais il peut fonctionner en générateur comme une dynamo. C'est-à-dire qu'avec l'inertie du train, la dynamo oppose de la résistance au mouvement et cela freine le train et en même temps cela crée de l'électricité. Donc un seul objet et deux fonctions, soit traction, soit freinage. Using a motor in this way is known as dynamic braking. By simply reversing the magnetic field of a motor, huge resistance is imposed on a train's forward momentum, slowing it down and generating kinetic energy. This energy is normally wasted as heat through overhead resistors. But the AGV has a remarkable alternative use for it. These brakes are regenerative, which means the braking energy created is not wasted as heat, but returned from the train to the national grid as electricity. In fact, up to 20% of the AGV's electrical consumption can be recovered with regenerative braking, energy efficiency that Lacote is extremely proud of. Donc on produit de l'électricité, on renvoie l'électricité à travers la caténaire au réseau public, et avec ça, on peut vendre notre électricité, on peut faire un peu d'argent en freinant ce train. The AGV's regenerative brakes improve safety as well as profits. As this is an electric, not a compressed air system, the AGV simply cannot be bled of its braking power, as was the runaway train at the Gare de Lyon. No matter how effective a train's brake system, the possibility of a head-on collision can never be completely eliminated. Somehow, passengers have to be protected from the violent forces of a potential impact. Engineer Thierry Yonnet has devoted a career to this challenge, and he's now helped to devise a revolutionary crash shock absorber that's built into the nose of the AGV. Donc c'est un système anti-collision. Euh, en cas de collision, on va absorber successivement par trois modules une partie de l'énergie. A huge volume of energy is generated by a high-speed impact, and it's the task of an anti-collision system to absorb as much of it as possible. 
Yonet's system does this in three phases. Dont le premier est essentiellement un système d'usinage mécanique. Euh, si on s'en approche, on peut voir qu'on a tout un système de fixation de ce coupleur sur une plaque. Et cette plaque, elle, est maintenue par quatre vis qui servent de fusible mécanique. En cas de choc violent, ces vis vont casser, elles sont faites là, elles sont là pour ça, elles vont céder. Et l'ensemble, tout l'ensemble, va se propulser à l'intérieur. After these fuses have broken, a second absorption system consisting of a large steel buffer absorbs additional energy. And behind that is a third system of pre-folded steel plates designed to crumple. The total energy absorbed helps maintain the structural integrity of the train. But if train journeys are to be made completely safe, advances in train design have to be matched by technology on the line. It was a quiet morning on October the 24th, 1979, in the small Scottish town of Invergairi, on the banks of the Tay estuary. Katrina Wright and her mother were on a train bound for Dundee. We're going through to Dundee, me and my mum. We were sitting second carriage from the back, and we were just going Christmas shopping early. It came to halt just after Invergairi station. It wasn't due to stop there, so we wondered why it had stopped. And then the, the guards told us that it had broken down. But what Katrina and her mother didn't know was that a Glasgow to Aberdeen express train was heading straight for them at 70 miles per hour. The guard on the speeding express train, George McRitchie, was riding in the brakes van. I'm around the bend when I seen it on the little train in the line. I didn't think it was on our line, I thought it was on the upcoming towards us, but here it was on the our line. Next thing, I went to put the bar brake on. But as McRitchie scrambled for the emergency brake in his van, it was too late. The express had a quarter of a mile to stop, but it didn't, and collided with the rear of the first train with such force that both reared up in a tangle of tearing metal. The tables and everything got turned, and we got thrown about all over the place, and then it came to a halt. The impact of the collision was so severe that it catapulted the back four carriages of the stationary train over the sea wall and into the estuary. There was complete silence and then everybody started screaming and crying. It would have been much worse if the tide had been in. So I don't think we would have made it, to be honest. Had Katrina's train plunged into water, she and the others in her carriage would almost certainly have drowned. But as it was, the soft mud in the bay cushioned the impact. Up on the track in his now derailed brake van was George McRitchie. Bumped my head and sort of stunned him. You know, when I come to you, I said, oh, jeez, I got looked inside, I said, Joe, jeez. The two-man driving crew of the Express died on impact. The senior driver had been a close friend of McRitchie's. That's when I seen my driver and second man lying there. And I took a tip ball and covered the bodies up. Yeah. And Bob had a hole right, right in the middle, as if he'd been shot. When he'd hit his head, when he applied the brake. Three more died in the rear carriage of Katrina Wright's train, taking the death toll to five. It does give me a lump in my throat. 